A biblical canon, or canon of scripture, is a list of texts which a particular religious community regards as authoritative scripture. The word canon comes from the Greek kappa alpha nu omega nu, meaning rule, or measuring stick. Christians became the first to use the term in reference to scripture, but Eugene Ulrich regards the idea as Jewish. Most of the canons listed below are considered closed, reflecting a belief that public revelation has ended and thus some person or persons can gather approved inspired texts into a complete and authoritative canon, which scholar Bruce Metzger defines as an authoritative collection of books. In contrast, an open canon, which permits the addition of books through the process of continuous revelation, Metzger defines as a collection of authoritative books. These canons have developed through debate and agreement by the religious authorities of their respective faiths and denominations. Believers consider canonical books as inspired by God or as expressive of the authoritative history of the relationship between God and his people. Some books, such as the Jewish Christian Gospels, have been excluded from the canon altogether, but many disputed books considered non-canonical or even apocryphal by some are considered to be biblical apocrypha or deuterocanonical or fully canonical by others. Differences exist between the Jewish Tanakh and Christian biblical canons, and between the canons of different Christian denominations. The differing criteria and processes of canonization dictate what the various communities regard as inspired scripture. In some cases where varying strata of scriptural inspiration have accumulated, it becomes prudent to discuss texts that only have an elevated status within a particular tradition. This becomes even more complex when considering the open canons of the various Latter-day Saint sects, which one may view as extensions of Christianity and thus a Judaism, and the scriptural revelations purportedly given to several leaders over the years within that movement. Jewish Canons Rabbinic Judaism Rabbinic Judaism recognizes the 24 books of the Masoretic text, commonly called the Tanakh or Hebrew Bible. Evidence suggests that the process of canonization occurred between 200 BC and 200 AD, and a popular position is that the Torah was canonized c. 400 BC, the prophets c. 200 BC, and the writings c. 100 AD perhaps at a hypothetical council of Jamnia. However, this position is increasingly criticized by modern scholars. The book of Deuteronomy includes a prohibition against adding or subtracting which might apply to the book itself or to the instruction received by Moses on Mount. Sinai, the book of two Maccabees, itself not a part of the Jewish canon, describes Nehemiah as having founded a library and collected books about the kings and prophets, and the writings of David, and letters of kings about votive offerings. The book of Nehemiah suggests that the priest scribe Ezra brought the Torah back from Babylon to Jerusalem and the second temple around the same time period. Both I and two Maccabees suggest that Judas Maccabeus likewise collected sacred books. Indeed, some scholars argue that the Jewish canon was fixed by the Hasmonean dynasty. However, these primary sources do not suggest that the canon was at that time closed. Moreover, it is not clear that these sacred books were identical to those that later became part of the canon. The Great Assembly, also known as the Great Synagogue, was, according to Jewish tradition, an assembly of 120 scribes, sages, and prophets. In the period from the end of the biblical prophets to the time of the development of rabbinic Judaism, marking a transition from an era of prophets to an era of rabbis, they lived in a period of about two centuries ending c. 70 AD. Among the developments in Judaism that are attributed to them are the fixing of the Jewish biblical canon, including the books of Ezekiel, Daniel, Esther, and the Twelve Minor Prophets, the introduction of the triple classification of the Oral Torah, dividing its study into the three branches of Midrash, Halakot, and Agadot, the introduction of the Feast of Purim, and the institution of the prayer known as the Shemini, E-E-S-R-E-H, as well as the synagogal prayers, rituals, and benedictions. 
In addition to the Tanakh, mainstream rabbinic Judaism considers the Talmud to be another central, authoritative text. It takes the form of a record of rabbinic discussions pertaining to Jewish law, ethics, philosophy, customs, and history. The Talmud has two components. The Mishnah, the first written compendium of Judaism's oral law, and the Gemara, an elucidation of the Mishnah and related Tanitic writings that often ventures onto other subjects and expounds broadly on the Tanakh. There are numerous citations of Sirach within the Talmud, even though the book was not ultimately accepted into the Hebrew canon. The Talmud is the basis for all codes of rabbinic law and is often quoted in other rabbinic literature. Certain groups of Jews, such as the Karaites, do not accept the oral law as it is codified in the Talmud and only consider the Tanakh to be authoritative. Beta Israel Ethiopian Jews, also known as Beta Israel, possess a canon of scripture that is distinct from Rabbinic Judaism. Mashafa Kedis is the name for the religious literature of these Jews, which is written primarily in GEZ. Their holiest book, the Oret, consists of the Pentateuch, as well as Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. The rest of the Ethiopian Jewish canon is considered to be of secondary importance. It consists of the remainder of the Hebrew canon, with the possible exception of the Book of Lamentations, and various deuterocanonical books. These include Sirach, Judith, Tobit 1 and 2 ESD Ras, 1 and 4 Baruch, the three books of Mechabian, Jubilees, Enoch, the Testament of Abraham, the Testament of Isaac, and the Testament of Jacob. The latter three patriarchal testaments are distinct to this scriptural tradition. A third tier of religious writings that are important to Ethiopian Jews but are not considered to be part of the canon, include the following. Nagara Muse, Motorawin, Motor Muse, Tezaza Sanbat, Ardit, The Apocalypse of Gorgorios, Mashafa Sartit, Abba Elias, Mashafa Malayekt, Mashafa Kahan, Disana Abram Wasera Bagabs, Gadla Sosna, and Bakadami Gabra Igsiaba. In addition to these, Zena Ahud and the sayings are various phallus for sources that are not necessarily considered holy but nonetheless have great influence. Samaritan Canon Another version of the Torah, in the Samaritan alphabet, also exists. This text is associated with the Samaritans, a people of whom the Jewish Encyclopedia states. Their history as a distinct community begins with the taking of Samaria by the Assyrians in 722 BC. The Samaritan Pentateuch's relationship to the Masoretic text is still disputed. Some differences are minor, such as the ages of different people mentioned in genealogy, while others are major such as a commandment to be monogamous, which only appears in the Samaritan version. More importantly, the Samaritan text also diverges from the Masoretic in stating that Moses received the Ten Commandments on Mount Gerizim, not Mount Sinai, and that it is upon this mountain that sacrifices to God should be made, not in Jerusalem. Scholars nonetheless consult the Samaritan version when trying to determine the meaning of text of the original Pentateuch, as well as to trace the development of text families. Some scrolls among the Dead Sea Scrolls have been identified as Proto-Samaritan Pentateuch text type. Comparisons have also been made between the Samaritan Torah and the Septuagint version. Samaritans consider the Torah to be inspired scripture but do not accept any other parts of the Bible, probably a position also held by the Sadducees. They did not expand their canon by adding any Samaritan compositions. There is a Samaritan book of Joshua, however, this is a popular chronicle written in Arabic and is not considered to be scripture. Other non-canonical Samaritan religious texts include the Memar Marka and the Defter, both from the 4th century or later. They regard themselves as the true guardians of the law. This assertion is only reinforced by the claim of the Samaritan community in Nablus to possess the oldest existing copy of the Torah, one that they believe to have been penned by Abisha, a grandson of Aaron, 